What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and we have the patch notes for the March public update preview for Age of Empires 4. Now, this is going to most importantly feature the modding capabilities that are coming to AoE 4. So let's dig into what's going to be available for this pup build, and then, of course, for later on this March. So we're wel excited to welcome you all to the first public update preview pup, right? Everyone here is pup, pup, pup. That's what it means. Ready we for uh, Thursday, March 10th through Friday, March 18th. So just about a week. We'll be pre previewing several aspects of our upcoming major update, Season 1. So that major update, it's coming. You can expect probably by the end of this month, I'd imagine. Um, this build is used not only for a sneak peek to owners of the game, but also provide an opportunity for passionate players to step up and give feedback. Okay, they'll contain new features, contents, or bug fixes, and will provide a preview of what's coming to the game in the weeks leading up to a major update. Okay, so this is just a sneak peek at that uh, upcoming major update. Owners of AOE4 on Steam are invited to join us for the public preview of this upcoming game. During this time, you can access a preview branch of the game. So it will be for all the owners of the game, uh, but it sounds like, while not broadly available during the pub select age insider members will have been granted access to a preview version of the content editor via email so some users are going to get access to this content editor we're also excited about uh, you may see some new mods pop up during the pop pup but you'll definitely have the chance to try out some of the in-house mods we've created to get you started so going to be some mods we're gonna get to play around with so for those of you looking for a little bit of variety of AOE4 or excited about modding this should be an exciting time for you uh, for this preview, we ask that you focus on utilizing the in-house mods during custom matches. So be for custom matches, man, more lobby games, huh? Uh, directions on downloading mods are below. If you run into unexpected behavior, stability issues. Okay, so uh, there's the timeline. Thursday, March 10th to uh, Friday, March 18th. The forum's closing on March 21st. Again, it looks sounds like you have to have special invite to the, the modding capabilities specifically. Um, or the content editor, rather. Um, there's all the, the specifics on how to access this. I'm not going to bore you with the uh, uh, this those specifics. Let's keep moving on. Creating mods. Select age insiders have been sent a Steam key to access the content the editor beta. You get the key. Okay, there's how to how to do that. Known issues uh, with the current build, which our team is aware of. Mod Britain and Ireland missing relics and fish. So we don't even know what that is yet. So we're not going to go into detail of that. Um, content creator known issues. Okay, we haven't even seen the content creator yet, so <laughs> we don't need to read all the known issues. It's not relevant quite yet. Okay, in-house mods. Here we go, baby. The team has created several interesting in-house mods to showcase various capabilities of the editor. So uh, these are developed by the dev team, right? And you can assume that these will be mods that will be able to be designed by players once this is publicly available, the, the editor, right? Royal Rumble game mode. Be the last king standing. Achieve victory by eliminating all enemy kings while defending your own. So this is based on Age of Empires 2 regicide mode. So that'll be fun. So protect the king. Wonder if, here's what I wonder. Does landmark sniping work in this or is it, do you have to just kill the king? I wonder if the other game modes or other victory conditions still exist. Tumbolos. Welcome to Paradise. This map features multiple tranquil islands collect connected by narrow sand tumbolos. Don't know what that exactly means. Supports up to two players. Oh boy, just so we all wanted more island maps. <laughs> Britain and Ireland. There we go. Nice and appropriate for St. Patrick's Day. We got our shamrock back here. Okay. Fight for Regency over... Reg Regency over the British Isles. This map features a landmass that assembles Britain, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. So it's cool. I always kind of enjoy the like world uh, kind of design maps. I remember back during Age of Mythology, I always like in Age of Empires 3, I loved playing like a map that was called like the world or whatever. And it was just like every continent, like the map uh, had like every continent or whatever. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Indian subcontinent. Uh, generated map battle over South Asia map features a landmass that resembles. Okay. So it sounds like there's some like, uh, this is, so this is going to be uh, similar to like the Indian continent makes sense. The gulch. Uh Oh, 
You ever wonder why we are here? This map features a box canyon surrounded by walls on all sides. Supports up to four players. Okay, so this sounds like a, a kind of close action fight here. Thick wood tuning pack. That's a lot of wood. Double the amount of wood available in trees. Ah, you know what? I, I don't. I always feel I, I kind of might enjoy this mod a little bit because I, I sometimes feel like the tree lines do run out very quickly. It feels uh, at times, especially on particular maps. So this will be giving those uh, that wood, those trees more wood. So, but cool to see like this isn't something they were able to tweak in a mod, right? That means we're gonna have some some nice tuning of some some values, right? If you're able to change how much wood the trees have, double villagers tuning pack. Uh, the peasants are revolt. I mean, multiplying. Train two villagers at the same time for the cost of one. Everybody gets to be Mongols. Woo! Okay, double the villagers. Dire wolves. The wolves are hungry and out for blood. All wolves have increased damage, hit points, and size. Nope. Nope. That's a big nope for me. Who wants to have an, an, uh, wolves killing more of your, your scholars and stuff out on the map? Uh, the wolves are deadly. Imagine, you know how quickly they rip through villagers already when you don't notice them, like, oh, and across the map, right? Now they're just going to, like, do that even faster. Okay, balance change log. Okay, here we go. Lick those chops. Here we go. Titan win rates in preparation for our first ranked. Oh, these are the goals. Okay, so tighten in the win rates for our first ranked season. So bring them all closer to each other. Encourage earlier conflict on the map with deer patches. Hmm. Improve the feel of moving naval units. Oh boy. And increase strategic options through more effective retreats. Increase risk in counterplay when constructing building near enemy forces. There you go. Maybe this will address uh, just dropping things right on top of your enemy's base. Ensure civ unique units stand out instead of being niche counters. Make dynasty bonuses more useful. Hello, China, for the period of the game in which they are unlocked. Create more compelling decision-making around picking landmarks. So hopefully some landmark balance. Let's see what we got here. Okay, all civilizations, core units. Okay, so they're talking about the field construction time of uh, of siege units, right? So that's for the Mongols, the Abbasid that are building siege units out in the field, right? Uh, or I guess most civs could do this, right? With the, the advanced siege engineering. Okay, it's going to take from 30 to 80 seconds for spring gold construction in the field. It's going to take a lot longer to build those spring golds with your spearmen up on the front line. Mangonel, double the time. So more than double the time for spring gold. Uh, exactly double for the Mangonel. Field construction, build time of the traction trebuchet increased. That's that's a lot too, 35 to 80. Okay, so that's a nice change. It makes it so that the, the, the swing of the battle of the civs that are able to build those stronger siege units in the field... Uh, they, they could just overwhelm the production rates of, of your siege engineering, uh, siege workshops. So now that's going to help bring that in line. I think it's a nice change. S scout hunting. Okay, here we go. Scouts. Hunting boat reload time reduced from two to one second. So you're going to be able to kill deer faster. Oh boy, that's a buff for the roost, right? Scout melee weapon cooldown reduced from four to two seconds. So scouts can attack faster now. Oh no. But their damage has been reduced from four to two seconds. Wait a second. So they attack faster, but they do two less damage. How does that come out? Uh, damage reduced from four to two, but now they attack in two seconds. Isn't that like a wash? I, I guess there's a small, must be a small change there. Uh, maybe I'm not understanding, but sounds like you should be able to pick up the deer faster with the hunting bow. Um, and that's particularly going to be useful for roost players. Okay, economy. Villager hunted meat carry capacity increased. Holy cow. So look at that. Wow, it's going to be way more interesting to get deer. Go from 10 to 25 for carrying meat. That's huge. That's a huge change. Sorry for the obviously and Delhi players who are not going to be able to carry the boars, but that's good. Survival techniques hunted meat carry capacity bonus removed. Wait. Survival techniques hunted meat carry capacity bonus. So that's not going to give you any more carry capacity. But it's going to increase the harvest rate from 10% to 15%. So that, that upgrade is going to be more tuned towards gathering faster for hunts. Okay. Survival techniques research time 
reduced from 75 to 45. So you can also research it faster. Okay, so that's all survival techniques. This isn't uh, professional scouts, right? That was a lot earlier, but you can kill the deer faster with, with a, uh, this scout changing, right? Naval. Improve the responsiveness of small and medium ships. Error ships can no longer fire while moving. Wow, that is a quite a change. That is quite a change. Extended lines re research time reduced bigly. This means you're going to be getting those fisher ecos. Maybe, maybe you want to get those fishing uh, upgrades faster. Uh, drift nets research time reduced. Galley population reduced. Junk population reduced. Okay, it looks like they're reducing a bunch of population of ships. Attack ranged armor reduced by one. Except for the Hulk. Attack ship ranged armor reduced by one. With the exception of the Hulk. Dang. Bring that Hulk down. I don't want that as OP Hawks. Bagla spring old weapon damage increased. Let's go. Love for the Bagla. Attack speed reduced. 3.25 to 3.75 seconds. There we go. More attack. Faster attack. The age of the Bagla. It is here. Warship formation spacing reduced. Okay, so you can form them up. It looks like easier. Baoshuan weapon range reduced from nine to eight tiles. Oh man, I wish I was like from nine to three tiles, but <laughs> that'll help. Nine to eight tiles, that's a good change. Naval navigator no longer gives plus one weapon range. Increased sight range improvement from one to four tiles. Okay. Okay, so that range, it looks like the increased sight range is going to increase by quite a bit. Okay, naval fixes. Man, this is a big change to water, guys. You know that I've been quite anti-water with this current state. I said it needed a major overhaul. These are some steps towards a major overhaul. You could even consider some of this to be pretty major, like arrow ships not attacking while moving. So like to see this, maybe it'll give me, a, I, I will consider checking out water again, right? Naval bug fixes. Update the selection area for all fishing deposits to match the visual for all fishing deposits, okay? This also resolves issues where deep fish become hard to select as the resource was depleted. Galley Dow and Junk help text updates specifically indicate they benefit from ranged attack from the blacksmith. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I made a YouTube video completely on explaining this early on in the release of AV4 because it's so confusing about like what upgrades actually <laughs> impact your uh, your boat, right? Okay, core core buildings and upgrades. Buildings under construction receive more damage. So you're dropping those keeps on the front line. You better be careful while it's under construction. Keep build time increased by 20 seconds. Stone wall tower build time increased from 60 an additional 30 seconds up to 90 for those stone wall towers. Goodbye stone wall tower rush. Boiling oil cost increase. It is quite a good attack. So kind of good to see that and the time increase. Yeah, because boiling oil is really, really strong with those keeps, right? Greased axles movement speed reduced. Oh, there we go. So Siege is getting even slower, 20% to 15%. They keep just in Siege, just in Siege. Geometry moved from the university to the Siege workshop. So that means you could get that upgrade uh, without your university for upgrading the Siege units. You can do it in a workshop now. And it's cheaper. 307 gold to 100 wood and 225 gold. That's a lot cheaper. Holy cow. That's a huge change. Okay. And you can get it faster. So big change there with Geometry. Siege Workshop works moved from the Siege Workshops to the University. Siege Works. Okay. Removed completely from the, the astronomical clock tower for the Chinese. Okay. So that's removed from the Siege Workshop. So they're flopping where some of the techs are. Siege Works resource cost increased quite significantly. Mongol improved version increased. Siege Works research time increased. Okay. They're really nerfing Siege, uh, siege Works. Uh, Terrence Barnes now correctly provides 30 stones instead of 15. So some nice changes to upgrades here. Wow, that's a lot to unpack, guys. Naval, these are core building upgrades. Honestly, there's nothing here that I've like thought was disappointing so far. I've, I've been pretty uh, pr pleasantly surprised. Of course, all this, you see how it actually plays out when it gets to getting players, getting in the hands of the players. Let's talk about these changes to the Abbasid Dynasty. So... We've got a number of changes to their units, upgrades, changes to all of the wings, uh, so and some bug fixes. So a lot to unpack here. Uh, camel Archer move speed increased.
from 6.5 to 6.75. So they're going to be a little bit faster for the Cam Archer. And their bonus damage versus Spearman reduced from three times to two times. Now, two times is still pretty significant. And as they mentioned before, they are making camels less of a specialist and more of a generic unit. So instead of being just good against Spearman, they'll be a little bit better against all units. So you can see their damage increase through the ages. So I think this is a nice little change. We'll probably, I mean, hopefully just make archers, uh, camels just a little more well-rounded. Uh, same thing with the camel rider damage increased from nine to 14. That is a lot of damage change there in the third age, uh, damage versus cavalry reduced from 18 down to four, 14. That's a 4% dis four point decrease. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, bonus damage reduced. So less bonus damage for camels overall, more general damage. There you go. Barding now only affects camel riders, no longer affects the camel archer. Okay, so that's specifically for the camel rider. Um, moved from blacksmith to the stables. Okay, so now you can get this upgrade uh, maybe while you're also getting researching. Because a lot of times at the, at the blacksmith, as soon as you hit the third age, you're getting like your military training time upgrade. Or maybe you're getting your range defense or your melee attack. And you can queue up both these tucks at the same time if you want to. Now they'll be in the stable. Uh, the barning costs significantly decreased. Look, from 300, 700 gold to 100, 225. That's a huge discount. Great savings. Better prices. Camel barding, research time reduced. So camel barding, obviously going to be something we're going to see a lot more probably. Economy wing changes. Now, everybody ages up with economic wing. Let's see what changes. Agriculture costs reduced from 200, 500 gold to 75 wood, 200 gold. So that's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I usually wouldn't get this upgrade because it was just so expensive. So this is the farming upgrade. And the, the research time has been reduced. So you can get that tech in faster. Trade wing changes. I like this one. Grand Bazaar moved from Imperial Age to the Feudal Age. Okay, so that's a big change there. So maybe they're trying to encourage you to maybe go for the trade wing and feudal. So you know I like a good trade wing, a uh, good trading build. So this could be good for me. Uh, cost reduced from 300 food, 700 gold to 50 food, 125 gold. Uh, research time reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. Spice roads move from feudal age to the imperial. So now spice roads is later on. So they've they flipped those texts, and the cost increased just a little bit for later on. So some nice changes there to those two wings and now the military wing. Boot camp requirement. So that's for making all of your, it upgrades all of your infantry. Reduce from Imperial to the feudal age. So now you can have a military push in the feudal age with maybe this boot camp tech, right? If you decide to go up with the military wing. So they're trying to make it so you don't just age up with the economic wing every time. So we'll have to see if these are actually viable issue, uh, viable out on the battlefield. Uh, cost reduced from 300 food to 700 gold to 50 food, 125 gold. So it costs exactly what fresh foodstuffs would cost to get that boot camp tech. So that could be pretty significant if you're playing like a rush Abyssin, which could be good. I mean, I'm really, I'm really excited to try this out. I like it all this boot camp research time decreased from 90 to 60 seconds. Okay. So you get it faster. Camel rider shields cost reduced from 307 gold to 250, 100 food. So all the camel upgrades are going to be cheaper. Uh, research time has been decreased. Man, Abbasid's going to be really strong. I, I'm really getting a good feeling from this. Abbasid support, camel support requirement increased from feudal to imperial. So camel support has been flipped. I never got the camel support in feudal age anyways. So I think that's fine. Um, for armor bonus, but it's going to give you more bonus too when you get it later on. So that'll be nice to trickle in some camels for the support later on in the game, in the late game, give them a little more utility. Uh, the cost increase since it's a later tech now um, and the research time increase from 60 to 90 since it's a later tech. So overall, we've got a lot of nice changes here. Changes to camels, changes to some of the techs, changes to all of the wings. Uh, this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. Be, be anxious to see. Let me know down in the comments if you play the Abyssin Dynasty, which wing do you think you're going to age up to the feudal age now? I think I'm most excited probably to try either this trade wing or military wing. Like I feel like this will be some nice, uh, there's some good potential. If you want to go for like an early trade boom, like I'll be curious to see how much this changes things. I'm still worried this may still not be enough value because getting a trade route established still takes time. 
Um, but particularly like this military wing might become, I could see maybe military wing becoming a viable option if you wanted to play really aggressive with Apicide in the Feudal Age. Bug fixes. Faith can no longer be used to convert naval units. I didn't do that anyways. Converted Abbasid villagers will correctly have the build menu updated to match their new allegiance. Uh, so that, that means you can't like build buildings, I guess, that was not available to your sieve, maybe. The Abbasid Golden Age production speed bonus now properly applies to all production buildings and not only military production buildings. Camel Archer Bow is no longer invisible after upgrading Incendiary Arrows. Okay, there we go. No more invisible bows. Composite Bow Tooltip correctly displays 33% instead of 25%. Improved processing now applies to town centers. Okay, well, there you go. Lots of change for Abbasi. Let's get into the Chinese. Stonewall Tower build time increased from 90 to 120 seconds. Goal! Down with the Tower Rush. I always like nerfing Tower Rushes. Ancient Techniques cost increased from 150 wood 320 gold to 200 wood 500 gold i don't remember which tech ancient techniques is but i'm sure you china buffs out there know exactly what that is barbican the sun sight range increased to match the outpost imperial spies ability now reveals villagers traders trade ship trade ships fishing ships and officials so i'm assuming they've added some uh some units that are revealed there essentially every economic unit right dynasty changes so they mentioned this as being something they were working on for this Dynasty units and buildings are no longer gated when advancing to the next dynasty. So this is huge. If you decide to go to the next dynasty, you're not going to be losing units and buildings from the previous dynasty. And that's a big key change here for China. This is going to make them, I mean, that's going to be really big. Yuan dynasty movement speed bonus no longer applies to siege. Okay. So again, another reoccurring theme of siege being slower. Village requirement reduced from Song Dynasty to the Tang Dynasty. Okay, so you can get that village, uh, build that village sooner. Um, cost has increased just by 25 wood. And the health has been increased by 500 wood. There we go. So your investment's going to be a little bit more secure with more HP. The granary, the granary requirement reduced from Yuan Dynasty to the Song Dynasty. Granary villager harvest boost reduce so now only just 10 percent from 15 more health and the pakoda uh, reduced from ming dynasty to the yuan dynasty so it looks like they they popped several buildings down uh a di one dynasty sooner it sounds like and adjusted some hp and uh, some of the rates there so dynasty changes a lot there i mean that's a core mechanic for china official changes supervised production and research speed reduced from 200 to 150%. So not going to be able to uh, speed up that... It's going to be slower to speed up that production and research speed. The train time of official is increased by 10 seconds. That could be particularly key in the Dark Age, right? Some people start with the Imperial official to get their gold in the Dark Age. That's going to be an extra 10 seconds. That's a lot of time in the you know first minute to two minutes of the game. Cost change also. Look, 150 food to... 100 food and 50 gold. So less food, but it does cost gold. I think you're going to need to mine gold now with China. I mean, many people already are, but sometimes people would just completely ignore the mine and just do everything with the Imperial official. It's going to not only cost you gold to get your Imperial official, um, but it's gonna, you're going to get your Imperial official later. I mean, this is going to change the timings for the Dark Age for sure. Okay, on to the English. Man arms time... Train time reduced from 22 to 15 seconds. So you're going to be able to train those man arms a lot faster. Vanguard man arms armor increase. So buffed man arms for the English. So maybe try and encourage you to use these more. Uh, maybe perhaps in the feudal age. Right? Because you can access them then. Abbey of Kings. He okay. Change the Abbey of Kings. Healing rate increased from 4 health over one, uh, per 1.5 seconds to 6 health per one second so a lot faster healing i still not sure if that makes it strong enough like i i, I got i don't know maybe do a man arm strategy with abby kings but i don't know we'll see starting wood increased from 150 to 200 so a nice buff to the english man arm stronger uh buff to abby of the kings if you want to try to use it and more starting wood so that's a nice little change to english setup camp can no longer be triggered while in combat 
I am all for this. I thought this was a little bit cheesy. Now you can't trigger it while you're in combat. I think that's appropriate. On to the French. Okay. Arbitrary Pavis. 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 Ability now increases armor by plus five instead of setting armor to five. What does that mean? Instead of... So it, it gives them additional armor instead of just giving them five armor. So I'm assuming that's more armor there overall. A net and gain in the armor. Fixed a bug with the French tech tree where traders were displayed in the dark age. Okay. I think that's just a UI, I'm assuming. Military Siege Engineer UI now matches other civilizations. Siege Engineer icon is restored. Royal Knight help text update to reflect proper duration of bonus after successful charge attack. So a few UI changes. Nothing really big here. I guess some additional armor. So French, not, not much changing there. Holy Roman Empire. Re okay. I see Regnus. I'm just hoping it's going to say what I think it's going to say. Regnus Cathedral. Relic capacity reduced from three to two. That means instead of producing 900 gold per second, that would be uh, 600 gold per second max. But let's see if there's any other changes. Burgrave Palace now produces infantry 400% faster instead of training units in batches of five. Oh, rip. No more batch training. This was one of the only batch training mechanic in the game, which is kind of something, uh, kind of a tip of the hat to AOE 3 at times, right? But uh, now it's just going to produce your infantry faster. So you can just print out units instead of waiting for five to pop out. So some changes there. Mindwork Palace research discount increase. So even a further increase, man, we got some Mindwork Palace research speed increase. So they're giving some early game buffs to uh, HRE, but obviously nerfing their late game just a little bit. Okay, Palace of Swabia, production speed and villager discount reduced from 75% to 66%. I'm not a math wizard, uh, so they were 75% off before, and now they're 66% off. So they're going to be a little bit more expensive. Still not a ton, but that is a small change. Inspired Warriors effect duration increased by an additional 30 seconds, double. So that's pretty big with those uh, prelates, you know, inspiring uh, the military. Marching drill costs reduced. So it looks a little bit cheaper. Drill research time reduced. So you can get that a lot faster, and it affects prelates. Holy cow. Wait, does this make prelates even faster than they already are? It, they already had a speed input boost, right? Yeah, this will make them even... Holy cow. These things are going to be flying all over the map. They're going to be like choo-choo. Added a prelate indicator for HRE players to be able to more easily locate and keep track of their prelates. Uh, I would like this for every civilization scholars, personally. I don't know. Scholars, priests, whatever you want to call them. Monks. Okay. I would say overall, this feels like some feels like some changes how the playstyle is going to work out. I feel like some bu some buffs, but then some nerfs. But overall, I don't know. I feel like it's a net buff, See, especially with this stuff. I think it's a net buff, especially to the early game, right? Maybe it won't be just straight fast uh, castle every time. By placing relic in docks, it is no longer possible to surpass the maximum twenty five percent attack speed bonus. The Aka Chapel blueprint or range indicator has been updated to use the correct color. Okay. Oh, oh, you can now use the wonder um, and the emergency repair ability. Okay. So you can emergency repair your, your wonder. <laughs> That's big. Uh, Docs can now properly make use of the influence in the emergency repair building. You know, I would like to let's see if Delhi. I would like to see Delhi be able to boost their dock research rates with their scholars, like like everything else in their entire civilization. I don't know why docks don't currently. We'll see if they change that. Keeps no longer grant a springhold when a unit is garrisoned, and the springhold placement is not researched. Oh, that's a bug. I didn't know that existed. Wow, that's a big bug. Let's fix that. Okay, relics placed inside of docks no longer increase attack speed of all players' ships. Why does it say Mongols? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Textiles and wait, is this supposed to be the start of Mongols? Yeah. Okay. They just didn't fix the header. So this is supposed to be a header. This is the Mongols right here. That's the end of, of uh, HRE. Textiles improved has been added to the towns that are available in the castle age. So you can increase the health of villagers by plus 50. So that means can your villagers have 125 HP instead of you could get up to 75 before. Or maybe it means you can get them up to 100 health, perhaps. I think that might be what it is. Mongol bug fixes. 
that's the only change. Just give your villagers a little bit more health. Improved biology now only provides 10% health instead of 15%. Okay, so biology is not going to improve biology. You'll have less HP increase on your cavalry. Fixed a uh, bug where Mongol improved the tech farms. Did not list the correct resource where the Mongol... 80, I don't know. I don't think I've ever done that. Kinda Palace now produces Mangadai in 90 seconds instead of 77 seconds. So it takes longer to get this Mangadai. The Mongol landmark town center can be packed while at maximum population. Okay, that's nice. So before you couldn't pack it up if you are max pop. I wish this could be the case for like some limit of Gurs. Sometimes you just can't read your Gurs, but I understand why you can't. So people don't just spam Gurs everywhere. Stone Commerce. Help text updated to specific specify trade bonus. The con defense arrow tooltip updated to show correct bonus of plus two. So no nerfs to Mongols from what I can see here. A rare thing, but we're seeing a lot of other sales receive buffs. So I don't know. It, it, maybe it's fine. Are the I mean, I don't know if Mongols need more nerfs. I I, I was hoping to see some con uh attack or range nerf but i think they got that in the last few patches Roos, warrior monk weapon range increased from 1.15 to 3 that's a lot of extra range charge weapon range increased so they really want you to fight with these warrior monks horse archer precision technology weapon range bonus reduced time reduced okay so less bonus here for archer precision technology streltsy double time ability no longer quickens their static deployment ability okay fishing ship the lord of fishing ship oh boy and what are we gonna see here cost increased from one to two for population cost increased from 75 to 150 wood wow that is a huge thing especially early on it's gonna cost double as much to get fishing ships wow that's a big one train time is it double math yeah <laughs> train time increased from 25 to 38 seconds health increased okay more health cost more types more population deep water fish gather rate increased by 0.9 shoreline gather rate increased 1.66 to 1.9 so they're more expensive they take longer to train uh but now they have greater rates i mean I don't know. They didn't change anything with the mechanic of tran like transforming the ships. Yes, they cost more to get now, but you still can transform back and forth. So if you get naval superiority, now you just have even more fishing rates than before. But you're going to take longer to get these. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, it's a change. I, I can't quite say how this is going to affect things. It's going to obviously slow down your boom early on. But if you control water, late game is going to be extremely effective. But it's going to cost a little more to have as many fishing ships because they cost now 150 wood but they're also some of the fastest wood gatherers in the game okay ruse bug fixes golden gate trade buttons have been relocated to match the market golden gate no longer shares double click selection with markets loyalty ships now have the correct upgrade applied after conversion hmm i'm not sure exactly what was going on with that before a bug with Abbey Trinity didn't display all of its unique text. Destroyed high trade house no longer produces deer until repaired. Wow, well, that was, must have been a convenient bug. Okay, lots of big changes to sieves. Other bug fixes. Rams can no longer target naval units. What? No! I love taking out a hawk with my Abbasid Rams at a water crossing. Boo! I disagree with this. Why can't you ram a naval unit? I mean, I know it's pretty unrealistic. Repairability now shows the correct requirements when attempting to use it on an enemy player. Okay. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, the Delhi Sultan, no changes to Delhi, by the way. The Delhi Sultan tech tree now lists hone blades on the Imperial tech instead of Castle Age. Delhi Tech Tree now lists slow burn defenses under Imperial Age instead of Castle. The English Setup Camp ability now has the correct requirements text. Field Construction Traction Trebuchets now have the correct tooltip. Com compound Defender effect is no longer active while the landmark is destroyed. A little bit of a change there. Okay. So as far as Civ changes go, big changes to 
I mean, not a whole lot for Mongols, but Rus have big changes. HRE have a ton of big changes. Only a few for French. This is some decent changes for the English. Chinese, a lot has changed. Abbasid, a Abbasid obviously has the most changes here. Okay, so a lot of Civ changes. Let's go on and see what else we got going on. Maps change log. Map size resource balance. Okay, let's see. Resource spawn tuning. You know this has been my number one sore spot. This is them that's really been bugging me. Let's see what they've changed. Map size resource balancing has received a pass with the goal of improving the distribution of resources between players. On open mats like Lipany and Dry Arabia, relics, gold deposits, and stone deposits now spawn in a tighter band for each player. Okay. So instead of having them spawn further away for one player, we'll see how that does. Always tweaking and looking to improve this. So keep sending screenshots and map seeds. Now, let me remind you, if you have not already, join the Fitzbro Discord. It's down in the description. But I have a dedicated channel for you to include your screenshot for maps and map seeds. And I can say, hey, devs, go check out this channel. And we've got, I already have like, maybe we have like 100 seeds in there of crazy things have happened. So include those map seeds, put them in that Discord channel. Or go in there and laugh at all the crazy seeds. Undefined maps like Mountain Pass and Mongolian Heights. The additional custom tuning for several maps to help ensure that the dividing geography does not separate one player from their allotment of resource. So like this would be like when more resources was on one side of the mountain or the river. Okay. Yeah. Talking. That's exactly what they're talking about. This was due to how we replace resources within a central band of the map. Okay. In cases like Mountain Pass, if one player spawns closer to the opening, the midpoint between players would be on one side of the mountain range. So that's why it was happening. Now we know this set of tuning has been about finding new constraints for the banning on the maps with dividing geography. So all these maps have an adjustment. Not a ton said of it, but they've apparently have taken a look at all the you know the half maps, right? Where you got the kind of split down the middle. Relics will now spawn in a more balanced configuration. One accessible relic per player. Three centrally contested relics. Applied globally to all map size and tuned specifically for several maps on the micro 1v1 size. Relics have been tuned to spawn further away from each other. Okay, so I think this might make it a little bit harder to get relics because there's not going to be like two very close, right? And one in the middle. It looks like it sounds like there's three in the middle and one on each side. Divided maps have custom tuning and will spawn one accessible relic and two contested per side of the map. Okay. For a total of six relics. There you go. So it looks like there's going to be six relics on all of the divided maps, which includes Confluence, Mountain Pass, Mongolian Heights, and Nagari. Okay. That's nice. So you're not going to have like all the relics spawning on one side of Mountain Pass while you're playing against the Holy Roman Empire or something like that. Small gold and stone deposits have had their contested spawn range tightened. One contested small gold and stone will now spawn per player. So it sounds like they're bringing resources a little bit closer to players in general. From is That's the takeaway I'm getting from this stuff. Sacred sites have had their spawn parameters narrowed to help them spawn evenly across the center of the map and maps with locations are not being specifically placed by the map like King of the Hill. So gonna try to make sacred sites a little more even. Okay, some nice change to the, sp the the resource, the RNG, the right, this resource spawn tuning. So we'll see what it actually looks like, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Specific map changes, Nagari. Boy, uh, you know, I'm not gonna read every every post here, but they have made some changes to Nagari here, Black Forest. I want to read this. Not spawn unchoppable trees in the middle of your towns and your courtyards. Spawn closer to exact middle of the map to ensure more equal access. I don't know. I'm not really playing this map anyways. Spawn reliability of the sacred second deer herd per player has been improved. They have put sacred sites back into Black Forest. Okay. There you go. So sacred sites are coming back in. That's a big thing. Um, I guess I should read Nagari. Mountain ranges have been shortened slightly. Okay. Deep water fish have been removed from the side ponds and can concentrate in the central lake. Good. So you have even access in the middle, at least, to know where the deep water fish are going to be. Relic count has been increased. Okay. 
Resource spawning for 1v1 micro size has had custom tuning done on various resource deposits. So trying to get rid of the unbalanced generations per side. Okay. Boulder Bay. We've updated the forest distribution to include smaller forests as opposed to a few larger ones. Okay. So they don't lock people in. We updated the fish distribution in the bay to be more even. Adjusted gold distribution to be spawned more evenly between players. Fixed an issue where players could spawn on the wrong side of the larger team. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that. Danube River. Holy cow. I'll tell you what, guys. I'll have these notes down in the description. If you want to read more about the maps, go down there and check out these notes because this will be a lot for me to read. And I'm not going to read you guys a bedtime story about maps, but been some big changes. Uh, Ancient Spires, Confluence, Mountain Pass, Altai. Let's check out Altai. We fix rare instances of sacred sites not spawning. Okay. Okay. I wish they added more wood to Altai, but nah. Mongolian Heights, some changes. Hill and Dare. Yeah, we've turned, tuned down wolf spawns per sacred site. We tuned starting forest to be able to, to not be able to close off a full ramp. Okay. I've seen that a lot. Overall, to have the plateau spawns to provide a more consistent experience. It'll be the same for both players. Okay, the main plateau entry ramp had its size slightly increased. Okay, King of the Hill. Now I'm going to read this one. Overhaul on King of the Hill. Okay. Players could have very little wood, you think? Neither TC or the path to the top of the hill was much longer and more difficult than their opponents. So instances of the gold and stone being distributed on the hill unfairly. We've taken out a bunch of more unfair aspects of the randomness of these parameters. On new generations, you should see... Overhauled hill generation to ensure fairness. Pathways up the hill are now based directly on player spawn locations with players getting a straight shot to access the top of the hill. So, boom, going right to the hill. I like that. Large gold and stone locations are mirrored. I love that. Removed all random forests on the map. Random forest, okay. A dense perimeter forest was added that rings the entire map. Ooh. Balance fighting for the central goal in stone with the necessity of maintaining a presence on the outer parts of the map for wood and food. But we were seeing many instances where food, wood access between players could be incredibly unbalanced. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like there's wood all around the corner. This is going to change this map a ton. Excited to dig in. I want to see what that looks like. Added maps. Mega random. Ability to spawn an enormous number of different configurations. A huge number of random parameters that make Mega Random could choose when gathering, such as whether to spawn lakes, rivers, impasses generate, terrain, anything you can think of. It's Mega Random. Okay. Send us your best Mega Random generations. We will continue to update Mega Random over time to make it fresh and excited and add more wackiness. I don't know if this is going to be in the ranked pool, but this will be fun. Mega Random. Crafted Map Valley Battle. As an example for what a crafted map may look like when created using the, the hashtag content editor beta, we have added a map called Valley Battle to the crafted maps tab. This map was created to be balanced, mostly symmetrical map. That's a bit of everything. Open fields for large battles, a river with numerous crossings, small lakes, manage of fishing, a defensive area near players' start locations, and resources that are exactly balanced between the two halves of the map. Wow, guys. So much to impact. I mean, we knew it was a major update, and boy, they, they haven't disappointed. There's a lot of updates coming. Uh, so just to recap real quickly, we have mod, the editor of the mods, right? The beta of the mods coming out. Or rather, it's going to be you can play the maps or you have access to access the content editor. Uh, you might have that. Known issues. Uh, there's some stuff they're working on. They've got uh, some out-of-the-box uh, in-house mods you can use. Royal Rumble, Tombolos, all of these that we mentioned earlier. They have changed the balance uh, across the board for all civilizations. Just some key aspects, particularly Siege, move some text around, etc. And then we've got uh, updates for each civilization. Abyssinian, Dynasty, Chinese, English, French, Mongols, Holy Roman Empire. Nothing for Delhi and Rus. Uh, and then some big changes to maps. So... I hope you guys are jazzed about this beta. Uh, I'll probably be streaming some of this over on twitch.tv slash fitzbro. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a little comment below. Let me know what you're most excited about. Maybe what you're not excited about. What, what's missing? What do you think should have been added in this? And uh, let me know if you're going to be playing Age of Empires 4 on this spring update. 
I will see you guys in the next video.